Welcome to the Lily Meadows channel. Today is July 14th, 2024. Today's message is about the song of the bride. Amen. There are many scriptures that talk about the bride of Christ. The bride has made herself ready and was granted to clothe herself in fine linen, pure and bright. Amen? What does that mean? Jesus said, I counsel you to buy me gold tried in the fire that you may be clothed. If we do not, we will be poor, blind, and naked. Amen? They thought they had need of nothing, that they had everything they could want, but yet the reality was... They were poor, blind, and naked. Well, the song of the Lamb is sung by people who have made themselves ready. The bride with the oil. The bride who looks to God, the person. It's a male or female. It's a relationship. As we look to God, we look to Him for light. And God, we do that. We're not just talking about you. Your presence is with us as you promised, as you have called me to do this. You are to be glorified in the name of Jesus. Let your name be exalted. Let your truth be revealed in all of our hearts across the earth and be glorified for who you are, for you are glorious indeed. Amen. We seek you. And if you're watching this very message, you're seeking God. You're looking for oil in your lamps. Amen. Oil is representative of his word. What is his word to you in your moment? Have you ever been going through something and you were like, God, what is your word on it? What is your word on it? And he will reveal his word on it to you. As you walk forward, then you stand on that word and you move forward. You repent, usually. Um, when he gives you the word on your situation, usually there's a course correction. Amen? Of course. And as we obey and comply and lay down our own lives, our own hearts, our own desires, for our desired end, we give that to him because we know he knows best for us. Amen? That is the lamb, his wife, the bride, has made herself ready. Amen. And we're going to read some about that, and we're going to get insight into what that is and hear even ancient prophecies regarding us, the bride of Christ. Amen. It's a wonderful day to be in his presence. It's a wonderful day to be called and chosen. Amen. And as you're listening to me, your heart is reaching out Amen. To be called, to be chosen, to get in the game. Amen. I don't think you want to sit on the sidelines. I think you want to get in the game. And how do you do that? Well, first, we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. We take the prescription for our disease. We put his blood on us. He has forgiven us for all that we have done that was sin and took our penalty. Amen. And now we are given to live with him. You know, this is a day of free will. It's, it's always been free will since the garden. We can decide whether we want God or whether we want to do our own thing, think our own thing, believe our own thing. Whether we put God's name on it or not is irrelevant. If we're doing our own thing apart from God, that's sin. And that's missing the mark. That's sin. And Jesus Christ came to reintroduce us to God, to bring a wholeness to our lives that we did not previously have. Amen. And as we receive this blood of Jesus, he won't remember your sins, my sins. He won't remember. He literally cleans you from the inside out. You're born again and are no longer the same person you are. Amen. After that is what we're talking about today. How do we walk this out? What does God expect from us? How does God feel toward us? 
And I know that this will encourage you. Amen. Because in looking and watching this message, you are seeking a deeper, you're seeking manna, you're seeking substance. And Christ Jesus is that substance. He did call me to speak to you whenever you're listening. And he is the substance in the things he will say to us in our message through his word and also in your room. Right now, God, help us be aware of your of your nearness and your love for us because he loves you. And he wants you to come near him. He really wants everyone to draw near to him and he will draw near to us. He wants everyone to to be to it to be said of all people, behold, I am their God and they are my people. But he does not force. He gives it freely. Amen. And the people that are walking with the enemy and serving the enemy are given opportunity today to bloom into that, to, you know, speak blasphemous things or do things where they forgot their clothes and, and all the things, even in front of children and music videos, you know, right? They're given opportunity and room to do that. So are the people who follow God, are given room to follow God. He told me last night, well, I gave them room. Why wouldn't I give you room? Why wouldn't I give you an opportunity, those who wish to serve the master, the king of glory, God, the creator? Amen. And that's what you're looking for as you watch. Amen. And that's what I'm going for. I'm going for it with all my heart. And I'm pouring out my guts for it every day in, in the presence of God in terms of it's his. So, Lord, this is yours. Everything we do is for you. Whatever you want to do, we yield our own thoughts about it, our desire for whatever. Our desire is for you, God. There's no, there's no one beside you that we seek after in this way. Lord, you're the water to the thirsty deer. You are the food to the starving person. You're the medicine to the sick people. You are everything we need, creator God. And as we look to you, you will move and speak and do your thing. As we give you room, amen. He'll give you room to listen. He'll give me room to do the things that he asked me to do. He'll give everyone room to do the thing that's in their heart, obviously, to a degree. Amen. But he gives room for us to be what we are. And as you listen, as you give him room, he's going to move on you and create within you, in me, a, a cleaner heart, a reality check. Amen. In our own lives, wherever you are in your life, whatever reality check you need and I need, it's it's wonderful. The reality check is actually such a blessing. It may be that we are doing the wrong thing. We have to turn from that. The reward is greater than you can now imagine, than any no eye has seen, no ear has heard, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Amen. Holy Spirit bears witness to the reality of his word. And so we're going to start where he said we're in the book of Revelation, chapter 19. And remember, this message is about the marriage supper of the Lamb, the bride of Christ, and the song that she will sing forever. We are given an opportunity today that we want to, we want to grab hold of. Amen. We are, we're not coasting through life as if we were on a raft going down a river. That's not the nature of victory. No one who accomplishes great things just floated along with the crowd. Amen. We have to get up off the, the raft that's the easy way and start walking upstream. I know it, it's hard, but that's the nature of how he made it for a reason. He's looking for a bride. In the story of Cinderella, that great king, the dad of the prince, is looking for grandchildren. He's looking for a, a wife, a queen, to be for, her, for his son, the prince. That's why God made us. He's looking for a bride. Now, he'll have many sons and daughters, many people. 
the multitudes cannot be numbered that will be saved. We're not talking about salvation is a free gift. I can't clothe myself in salvation, but I can make myself ready and clothe myself in fine white linen. But I can't save myself because this is all the free gift of God. Once we are saved in Christ, born again, and we begin to live for him, we have an opportunity to go all the way. And the same thing in your marriage or any marriage. You marry, it's exciting. You're like, oh, we're married, yay. But then life will kick you in the guts. Life will, you know, you'll have to endure together and push through together. Right? And I'm telling you, my husband has never been more attractive than when he helped me with throw up with the little kids or did the dishes yesterday when I was painting the bathroom. He went in the kitchen, he cleaned it, and he did all the dishes. And I didn't want to do that after I had finished painting, but he did it. That is so attractive to me. Do you, you know what I'm saying? It's more attractive than if he, you know, flexed his muscles or something. Do you understand? It's a way to flex your muscles to God. I mean, why did he test Job? Why did he test Job? What, why was that a thing? God desires us to choose him, to believe him through things. And if we're willing to go forward with him and be disciplined, remember he disciplines those he loves. And those who he brings to himself, he scourges. He said, take up your cross and follow me, right? That didn't mean put on your gold necklace and go to church. It meant take up your cross and follow me. Live for me. Keep giving me your life when things aren't working out the way you wish. When you're being dishonored and even stepped on and mistreated, talked bad about, pushed out of situations. What do you do about that? How do you treat the one who slaps your cheek? Do you give him the other cheek? Or do you go attack? You see what I mean? We decide. These are decisions that we make. This is what we're talking about. Either having oil or making the bride making herself ready. We, we get a daily opportunity to serve God. Now, we're not going to measure up every time. I did. He, he corrected me about something today. My heart. And he will not tell me what to do in the time, and then later he'll reflect. Maybe, do you think that was the right thing? Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. It was a heart matter. And I repented, and I do repent now. Point being, it's a daily walk. We're being refined every day. When they refine silver, the silversmith will put it in the fire until he can see his own reflection in it. And it's perfect. If you leave it longer, it'll burn. If you leave it too short, it'll still be tarnished. It'll still have impurities. Gold tried in the fire that you may be clothed. Right? There will be multitudes and multitudes, unnumberable multitudes, saved with palm branches, giving God glory forever. They escaped hell. Amen. That's awesome. But we're given an opportunity, and those are the people I'm talking to. That's what I'm called to express to you today. Amen. And we're going to go into the Word of God to get that information. Amen. All right, and this will happen. This is Revelation chapter 19, if you want to turn there. And this is a rejoicing in heaven. So they're about to have a party in heaven. Why? Does heaven watch what happens on the earth? Yeah, yeah, the great cloud of witnesses, it says in the Bible, cheers us on to win this race because we're carrying the baton they gave us. I'm about to read something from John who's in glory now. You see, it's his experience. And we take these things that they gave us in the Bible and we run with it. That's what Paul said to do, right? We take what Paul said to do and we run with it. Amen. We don't just put it in our pocket and walk away. We live it. Amen. And you can tell the difference when you're married to someone if they live the marriage or they just benefit from it. And you know what I'm saying? 
if they live it, if they care about you, if they go after your heart, what, what are you thinking about today? Right? You know, it's you can't fake that. Nobody can fake that with God. People can go to church and dress all up and do whatever, you know, look good and, and help at the soup kitchen and sweep the floor good and you say all the right things. But God knows the heart. Amen? Amen. It doesn't matter. Like, that's just not, that's not anything. Our own righteousness is those filthy rags. That's like period rags. That's gross. It's not worth anything. And it's to be discarded. Our own righteousness. But the righteousness of Christ in us, that's why us has to be dead to self. That's why he said you have to die to yourself if you want to be alive. Amen? If a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. So if you hold on to your life and live it for your sake, you'll be alone in the end. How many people found out that the hard way, right? Let that not be you. Lay down your life to God and just tell him God. And he'll give you something to do. He'll give you people to bless. And it's a co-labor. It's not like you do something, check it off the list, so God will have to be happy with you. It's not like that. It's a co-labor. Amen? Yes. After this, I heard what seemed to be a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven crying, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. Amen. For his judgments are true and just. For he has judged the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality and has avenged on her the blood of his servants. Once more they cried out, Hallelujah, it was their blood. A lot of them crying out in that great cloud of witnesses were killed by this thing. It's spiritual. It is, you know, it says in the Bible, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. Well, the same exact thing that killed them is still trying to do harm today on the earth, right? But every time blood was shed for it, every time someone gave their life, it got less and less powerful. So I can say the Pope is not the way to get to God and not be martyred. Because they were martyred for that very thing. Many were martyred for that. But I can say the Pope is not the way to get to God. It's Jesus Christ alone, himself, right? So I'm not going to be martyred for saying that. But there were times in history that people would have been killed for saying that. Well, that beast or whatever it was, was defeated and defeated and defeated as more and more people stood up to it. Right? So it's their blood. They're excited that the judgment has come. Amen? Those people who were killed for saying that are in the great cloud of witnesses and cheering today when it goes down. Because that's what that is. Anything that tries to take the place of Jesus Christ is an antichrist, is an enemy of God. Amen? And we don't want to find ourselves following enemies of God or becoming an enemy of God. Right? Because salvation and glory and power belong to our God. Amen. For his judgments are true and just. For he has judged the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality and has avenged on her the blood of his servants. Once more they cried out, Hallelujah. The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. Amen. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who was seated on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And from the throne came a voice saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, small and great. And as you're watching, you're praising him too. Amen. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like a roar of many waters, and like a sound of mighty peals of thunder, saying, 
crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. He always reigned. Let us rejoice and exalt and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine, white, fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True. Who is it? It's Jesus Christ. You see, we see him. We exalt him. Amen. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems. And he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a white robe, in a robe dipped in blood. And the name by which he is called is the Word of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, pure and white, were following him on white horses. From his mouth came, comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. And he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. And we are coming up on the thousand years where we will... Well, and he threw him into the pit, the devil, and shut it and sealed it over. We're in Revelation 20, verse 3, with him, so that he might not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be released for a little while. Then I saw thrones and seated on them were those to whom the authority to judge was committed. Also, I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God. And I believe that does mean not necessarily literal. I, I think what it means, this is my take on it, you know. We're talking about the book of Revelation, so I'm not saying I know for sure. But my take on this, Jesus is the head. We are the body. How many of you and I have given our right, our headship over to the Lord to be our head? Then we are his body, because a body cannot have two heads, right? Because if I had two brains telling me what to do, I would be very discombobulated. Nothing would work right. You know, my hand would move, one, and I couldn't. You need one commander. It's either you or Jesus or the devil, you know. <laughs> it really is that simple. If you give him lordship over your life, he is king of kings and lord of lords. And how do you worship this great God? By acknowledging the reality of that in your moment-by-moment -moment life. It's that simple. Amen. Amen. And he um, will reign. Amen. So beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God, to me speaks of, Losing, laying down our own lives. Those who lay it down, who live for God, are the ones who ride in with him, the ones who rule and reign with him, because we overcome. What did we overcome? Ourselves, our own desire, which is this, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, is the desire to know things apart from God. Whether it's good or evil, it's apart from God. And as we come to know our God and snuggle him, like, I want to be close to him right now. God, I'm so hungry for you. I'm so hungry for you. 
as we seek him like that and we, we really yearn for him, right? Then he becomes a not worth it to us that nothing else is as worth it as him and his call on your life. And when you begin to do what you were designed to do, it's awesome. But there is a fight in order to do that. And that's why you have overcome. To those who overcome, Jesus said in Revelation chapter 3, to the church in Laodicea, for those who overcome, I will grant you to sit with me on my throne as I overcame and sat with my father on his throne. Well, if there wasn't something to overcome, then how are we overcomers? What are we overcoming? Our desire to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Our desire to judge someone else. Our desire to decide if someone else is right or wrong. Now, we have discernment. And if you are if, if you feel from God somebody is not coming from him, stop watching. Just turn it off and go do something else, you know? But you're not responsible for that person and what they're doing. God showed me multiple times people doing the wrong thing. Well, I don't go email them. I, I just, okay, I may pray for them as led or just move on. But I don't keep watching and I don't, I recognize darkness, right? But I don't judge it. I'm not going to be the judge of it. I just know, hey, that stove will burn your hand. Don't touch it. You know what I'm saying? But I don't judge the stove, decide if the stove is right or wrong, what, and, and analyze what the stove is doing that, that's burning or, you know what I'm saying. I just live before God and let it go. If he wants me to pray for it, I will. If he wants me to pray for protection of the sheep, I have seen some serious demonic stuff in people that are called ministers. I have. Now, I take that seriously and I pray, but I'm not ever going to judge them. Because if I judge them, I'll be judged as I judge. I'm a minister. I don't want to be judged, so I'm very mindful of how I judge other ministers. Do you understand? It's, a, it's so simple that everybody, when we stand before God, are going to be like, oh, you just wanted me to like give my life to you, to take every thought captive into the obedience of Christ? You mean you mean I can't just let angry thoughts fly around my head? No. Well, you can, but all you're doing is letting it is rotten. And it'll grow more rotten. And it'll it'll like be a place where the flies have maggots and they just grow and grow and grow spiritually. If you believe angry thoughts about someone or, you know, whatever, it's, it's dirty, it's gross. It's not what we're after. You know what I mean? What we're after is God fully and completely. So if I see something that's not of him, I just won't watch it. Do you see what I mean? But I'm not the judge of it, and I don't decide anything regarding it other than what I do about it. And that is life. So... When you watch judge shows, when you see the TV and they yes cheer or X no humans, that's the nature of the sinful desire and the sinful nature is to take ownership of your morality, to take ownership. I can do whatever I want to my tummy, <laughs> to do anything that is not pleasing to God and disrupts things that makes sense? I can do that. But, or I can yield over my life to God. And I promise you, you'll have a peace that passes understanding. You'll have a reality of God in your life. He is like the dove that left the ark. If there's not a place for him to land, he won't land. But Holy Spirit lands on a life that is pure. And where the Jesus is the head, Holy Spirit has a home there. The beheaded. They rule and reign with Jesus Christ. It's really amazing. Now he wanted me to read um, oops, Song of Solomon, um, chapter... Well, I'm going to tell you quickly what happened in chapter 3, and then we're going to, at the beginning, then we're going to start um, Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 6. Amen. Song of Solomon is a song of the wedding of Jesus and his people. Right? It's, it's God... Even in the Old Testament, God told them, your maker is your husband. God intends to take care of you. He intends to rule, to rule your heart, if, but he will not. 
forcefully do it. Ever. He will not force me to do this message. He will not force me to do anything or not do anything. He will allow me room to make my decisions. Same is true for you. Reflect on your life. You can turn this off. You can do... He'll give you room, right? He gives people room. So that on that day of the great judgment, when he judges us, he's fair and just. And he'll say, what did you do with the room that I gave you? And this is the parable of the talents. Behold, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master is what you'll hear if you lay down your life for God and you live for him and seek him with all your heart, mind, and soul. I promise. Or you could hear, you wicked and lazy servant, and you don't want to hear that. Do you see? But it isn't based on what he did or didn't do. He already died on the cross for everyone. It's based on your, what did you do with that? Did you receive him as your savior and get cleansed? I suggest it. If you haven't, don't go to sleep tonight until you have. Amen. Amen. You'll, Satan will have no access to your life once you've given your heart to God. Amen. Give him your life. Walk it out. Amen. Amen. Do it. He's good. You won't be sorry. <laughs> you feel his presence. I mean, he loves you. He's real. He's God. He knows how many hairs are in your head. You know he could be counting them right now. I bet he is because he sent me to you and you opened it and you're listening right now. He is a sovereign God. He knows everything what he's doing. And he's preparing for a wedding. When it's time for the wedding and the wedding bells ring, where will you be in the wedding? That's up to you. You see? So when you go stand before him, he's not going to judge you based on what he did. He's going to be judging all based on what we did, what we chose. He gave us room to do things. What did we do with that room? How do you know what you're supposed to do then, Lily? How do I know how to live right? And so I can say I and do the right things. Read the Bible. I promise you before the living God, read the Bible. It's the book that doesn't change. Amen. You, society changes. When I was a kid, there was no cell phone. Even when I was in college, there was no cell phone. Life was very different. But the word of God, even through generations of horses and buggies and olden day stuff, even before that, even forever was the word of God in the beginning was the word and the word was God and Jesus is called the word of God amen so that is something that will give you wisdom read Proverbs read Ecclesiastes read Song of Solomon to fall in love with Jesus and read the Bible that's how we're going to know what his thoughts are what does God think what does he want well he'll answer in that word in the word six I mean it's a big it's a big book and you can get the Bible app and read. ESV is the best reader that I've found. Um, if you're going to listen audibly on the U version Bible app, ESV is the best version for this for the reader of it. For me, I mean, I find that reader where I can't not be distracted by what their their voice, but I can hear what God is saying the best through that version. Even though King James version is my favorite personal version, it's just because I like the way it was closed, and I was I was born into God through the King James Version. Amen. And that's wonderful. If you're going to read, I would read that. But you know, I mean, everybody's brain is different and it's a different kind of language. It doesn't matter. Because the Word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. So if you have a question, you're like getting his thoughts on it. You know what I mean? Like, my children can do something. They'll, they could guess their dad's thoughts on something. Would dad want me to jump off that is a little bit too high. Would he want me to do that? They can judge what he would want them to do. Why? Because he's a part of their lives. Because he's communicated in the previous times what he what he expects, what he thinks about certain things. So they might say, I should work hard because he's going to see my report card. And I know that he'll get upset if I don't have good grades. Do you see what I'm saying? Because that he is part of their lives and they know what he would expect. How much more should we know what our creator would expect? Does that make sense? How do you know? Read the Bible. I'm telling you the truth. Listen to it. Listen to it while you're driving. Listen to it while you're doing the dishes. Listen to it while you vacuum. And and just just let don't try to just hear the first hear the language and and you'll know your father. Amen.
He is the Word, and He loves you, and He wants you to, to know and, and to walk with Him. Amen. And I'm going to finish this message about the bride, because Jesus is preparing for a wedding. So in chapter 3, there is a woman, the bride of Christ, the people of God, whether male or female, it's... It's a not, in Christ there is no male or female. There is no Jew or Greek. We're in Christ and we live according to his specifications and design for us. Amen. And it's according to the word of God. It's not what we would make up. It's in the word of God, you know. But a bride can be, a man can be in this scene in the same way as a heart. It's a heart issue, Okay. Because he likens his people, male and female, to a bride. And he also likens us to son, sons of God. Well, I'm a son of God. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it just is relational. Why did he pick bride? Why did he pick us humanity? Because your maker is your husband. And he said, they shall be my people and I shall be their God. A husband and a bride is the most intimate. A husband and wife is the most intimate relationship known ever. That's why he likened it to that. He wants to be a part of your everyday life. If I am on the side of the road needing some, the first person I'm going to call is my husband. And if I call him, he will answer because his life is tied up in my life. If I am dealing with something, he's dealing with it. If he's dealing with something, I'm dealing with it. Do you see what I mean? So if you're dealing with something, God's dealing with it. And also if God's dealing something with something, you're dealing with it. If he shares his heart with you. You see, that's why he likened us. So that's what we're, we're preparing. Well, what is a wedding? The consummation of that relationship. How long will that last? Forever. There are people who know the Lord and will get into heaven, but will not be this bride. Because you have to clothe yourself. We, he, he set us free by his blood on the cross, and we are saved. Of no, We did nothing to deserve that. We can't earn that. But he did give an opportunity to go beyond that. And Cinderella had that same opportunity in her heart. How did she live her life? How did she feel? How did she, did she exalt herself over? You know what I mean? She lived a certain life and he watched her from a distance. The Lord Jesus, if you put it like that. He watches us from a distance to see what we will do. Amen he doesn't force and that's how that's the secret so this bride was called by him right she sought him he came to her door and knocked but she hesitated for just a millisecond and then he left but he left his fragrance on the door handle she ran after him all over the place same thing i think happened to all of us who walk with god and the watchmen on the walls, they beat me. They said, what are you doing? You're a girl. You shouldn't be doing that. You know what I'm saying? Religion. It, it tried to beat us up. Why are you looking for him? Why don't you just come to church and give this whatever? You know what I mean. Why are you looking for Jesus? Quit trying to be so extreme. Why don't you just go with the flow and enter religion and, and just be a good girl and give us your money or whatever they want. You know what I mean? Attention money, whatever. And she was like, no, I'm looking for those, the one who my soul loves. I don't want you. I want someone. Oh, well, let's beat her. Get her out of here, you know. And you've been through stuff like that. All those who seek God have been through persecution, rejection, and hatred from people. It's part, it's part, it's the nature of the battle. So then we lean into our husband. Hey, husband, somebody's being real mean to me. Sir, what, do you, what is this about? What, what should I do about it? Oh, I'm going to be right there. And you're married to Jesus, bride of Christ. And he came. He comes right there. He comforted me. He healed me. He helped me through. He helped me love people that persecuted me. He helped me forgive them. And he helped me move on from it. Amen. And just as if it never happened, just whatever, you know. He can do that. He is God. He, he, can't, he was right there when it happened, and he's my husband. And he is attentive to my cry. And the same is true for any who look for this intimate relationship. Behold, I knock. If anyone opens the door, I will come in.
to them and eat with them and be with them. You don't have to be male, female, it could be anybody. And once he comes in, then you, he'll call you out to do something. And she was looking for him and looking for him. She, she sought him, but he, she found him not. I will rise now and go about the city in the streets and in the squares. I will seek whom, him whom my soul loves. Song of Solomon, chapter 3. I sought him, but found him not. The watchmen found me as they went about the city. Have you seen him whom my soul loves? Scarcely I had passed them when I found him whom my soul loves. We have to pass the watchmen. Those people who check out what you're doing and, you know, what just doesn't matter. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? We have to pass the human thinking about what you're doing and who you are. We've had that ever since we were little. We have to pass that and we get to pass that so that we don't have to be in bondage to what other people think you should be doing or not doing because they don't know. Amen. They don't know what you should be doing. And once you know that, who cares what they think? Amen. That's freedom. Fear of man is a snare in the nose. It's like a ring in the nose and it pulls you around. The fear of man it gives them control over you. Don't do that. That's stupid because you have one. But that we should fear, and that is God. Amen. Fear the Lord your God, and that, and you know, that's what we're supposed to do. I sky past them. All those religious folk, all those opinionated people. What are they to me? I pass them because that I'm looking for the one who my soul loves. Right? If you're in love with somebody, and somebody's trying to tell you you shouldn't be in love with them, you're too young or whatever. You're like, get out of my way. You know, you can't tell me you to be in love with. Oh yes, we can. Scarcely I had passed them. When I found him whom my soul loves, Jesus, amen, I held him and would not let him go until I had brought him into my mother's house, amen, and into the chamber of her who conceived me. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or the does of the field, that you stir not up nor awaken love until it pleases. And I know one thing about my Lord and your Lord that he pleaseth he pleaseth to be awakened and he is right now and he's visiting the earth with his goodness as he's awakened in his bride and there's a bunch of other nasty dragons coming up out of the sea and all that as well happening at the same time but we're focusing on our king who's way bigger and stronger amen what is that coming up from the wilderness like columns of smoke perfumed with myrrh and frankincense. Man, myrrh is born out of the suffering. Myrrh is a is an incense of suffering and endurance. Amen. And you know what I mean if you know what I mean, beloved. We keep waiting on him even though it didn't go the way we thought. They were really mean. Right? And, and it didn't work the way you thought. And you're like, why did it work like that? Why were they allowed to attack me? Right? Or whatever. Myrrh. We just, oh, we just trust you anyway. God, you're worthy. You're worthy of persecution. You're worthy of whatever. Because you're worthy. <laughs> and he hears that. He loves that. That's why he made it. So he could have that. That's why it's hard. I promise you. Then in a long time, we'll be very grateful that he made it how he did. So we could prove ourselves. Amen? A marathon isn't a marathon if somebody cheats. You have to run it to win it. And ain't nobody cheating God. Amen? And you don't run it in your own strength. You run it puking on the side and getting back in the game. You know what I mean? You run it because you love your master. He's worth it. He's worthy. Amen. And he sees these people. He sees these people who live like this. He knows. I know many and walk with many of you who live like this. He sees it. That you're perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all the fragrant powders of a merchant. Behold, because you purchased of him gold tried in the fire. You purchased of him this myrrh. You purchased of him a box full of sacrifice. Amen. He loves the sacrifice of praise. He does. Amen. Behold, it is the litter of Solomon. That's a stagecoach. 
Amen. Cinderella, we're all looking for the stagecoach of our king. This is We're talking about Solomon arrives for the wedding. Jesus arrives for the wedding. Amen. And I have to finish quickly because I have something else to read. So behold, it's the stagecoach of Solomon. Yeah. Around it are 60 mighty men, some of the mighty men of Israel, all of them wearing swords and expert in war. There are angels all around me right now. They're expert in war. They know how to protect me. They know how to protect this mouth because it is given over to God. Amen. They know how to protect you. And they know how to protect Jesus. <laughs> Amen. And he made himself a carriage. And it describes on the day of his wedding, on the day of the gladness of his heart. Beloved, you are beautiful. That's what he says to his bride. My love, behold, you are beautiful. Your eyes are doves behind your veil. Your hair is like a flock of goats leaping down slopes. Do you understand? Jesus is enamored with you and I. The creator of God is looking for a wife. What? I, I don't know. Okay, it's deeper than me. And so we're going to read just a few um, minutes in here regarding in the, the bride shall appear. And she, coming forth, shall be seen. This is Old Testament writer Ezra who wrote the Bible. He wrote Book 2, which was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is a conversation between he and God. Amen. It's not the Bible, but it is. A, I believe it to be a, a true conversation between him and God. We never would establish doctrine from it or anything like that. You know, Only the Bible, though it is in, in some Bibles, and I... Don't really understand all that. But I do know that he said, For my son Jesus shall be revealed with those that be with him. And that's exactly what we read in Revelation 17. That those dressed in white will ride in with him. With those that be with him. Right? With him. What does that mean? He said, Behold, I will be with you to the end of the age. Well, is he with you to, to spout off? Ten prayers once a day, where you've spent 30 minutes talking to him a day? That's not with. Would that be with a spouse? Hey, what's up? Bring me my stuff. Okay, have a nice day. Thanks. See you later. No, it's how are you feeling today? Do you need something? I need something. I'm on the side of the road. I need something, God, in my life. I got bad news. I don't feel good. I'm, right? I'm being attacked. I don't... Get what, what, why am I feel sad? All the reasons we need God's help. Well, when you are intimate with Him, you have to be able to call on Him. Don't ask for other people to pray for you. Don't ask for them to push through for you. Because the bride can't give someone else the oil. The oil is a disciplined, obedient life. I can't give you that. I can share from the overflow of it. And you can too. I'm talking to you. But you can't give them your obedience over years and years. Only God knows what doing these costs. Only God knows. And how grateful I am to him for calling me to do this. Even though at the time I'm speaking, not very many are watching. It's not about that. It's about my Lord and honoring him in whatever way he asked me to. But the process itself of whatever he asked you to do is real and costly. Amen? Whatever it is. He's worthy. He's always worthy. And he knows that. He knows I'm paying a cost. Well, I can't give that to you. How could I give that to you? But my life in speaking now to you from the place that I exist with God, because I did pray through, because I did live it out, because I did die to myself by his grace, all these things by his grace. I went through all kinds of stuff, but by his grace. And he was with me. And I, perseverance, patience, produces in you these things. You can't give that to someone else. If they say, I want what you have. I want to be a speaker on this on videos, Lily. I want what you have. I can't give you my 26 years of obedience and, and processing. <laughs> I can't give you that. That's why on the day when he said, Behold, I never knew you, right? He will be with them. It's very simple. 
It's very simple. It's marriage. That's why he likened it to the wedding. And this is eternal as well. He said to me, <clears throat> this is Ezra, 2 Ezra chapter 7, verse 19. There is no judge above God and none that has understanding above the highest. For there be many that perish in this life because they despise the law of God that is set before them. For God has given straight commandment to such as came, what they should do to live even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. Don't touch the stove. Don't watch the false prophets. Don't engage in sin. Run from it. Man, it will take everything from you. The wages of sin is death, and if Jesus paid it, you can be forgiven, but don't keep doing it. Okay? Okay? So we don't want to perish, for lack of knowledge. We don't want to perish. We have the God has given straight commandment. Love your neighbor. Don't judge. Okay? Um, it goes on and on. Right. He's given straight commandments to such as came. I think the whole entire world knows that you're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. Amen? And only God can help us do that. And we know that. We give him glory. What they should do to live. I just told you. That's what this whole message is. That's what every Lily Meadows channel is. Message. It's to tell you what you should do to live. Even as they came and what you should observe to avoid punishment. Right? I mean, why wouldn't your father tell you that? You're navigating a really nasty world. It's like the flood. It's like before the flood. It's darkness. There's demonic powers and gross things over the earth. And humankind is almost all going the wrong way. And there's a black box that it gives this unified drone message. For, for a long time since it was created, right? Right? Uh, that's what you should observe to avoid punishment, right? Don't go that way. So do you think that God, creator God, would try to tell you what you should not go? Don't go play with snakes. Okay, go and, and live before me. He would tell you the right thing to do if you'll listen. But what you do with the space you're given, your time, is yours to decide. You can read the Bible or you can go watch some nasty show. It's on you. So is what is going to be the result of it. We will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Every one of us. And give account for every word you said and everything that you did. Now the blood of Jesus will cover. But you can't keep gossiping and keep judging and keep killing and keep doing yus yucky stuff, how, how is that? That's not okay. See? You can't so say you're sorry and then keep doing it. Those people go to jail. Those are the people sitting in jail who say they might say they're sorry to the judge, but they go back and do it again. Well, does the judge be like, oh, you're sorry, okay. You can drive drunk and kill people, no problem. Or do they say, it doesn't matter if you're sorry. You keep doing the same thing, you're going to be in prison because you're a danger. You don't want to be called a danger to what God loves. You see, it's a serious thing, you know. What you should observe to it, avoid punishment. Yes, ma'am, you should say. Nevertheless, they were not obedient to him, but spake against him and imagined vain things and deceived themselves by their wicked deeds and said of the Most High that he is not and knew not his ways. But his law they have despised and denied his covenants. In his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. And therefore, Ezra, for the empty are empty things, and for the full are full things. That is, this message is a message of fullness. For the full. You're not listening to me. In, and I wouldn't imagine, unless you were looking for the full things of God. Because then when I opened this message, when you opened it at the beginning, I said we're looking for God. And he shows up with the full things. Because for the full are the full things. For the empty are the empty things. Right? Come on. The drunkards hang with drunkards. Scholars hang with scholars. You see, it's... Right. Behold, the time shall come, and I'm going to close in just a second now. Behold, the time shall come that those tokens which I have told them shall come to pass, and the bride shall appear. 
And she coming forth shall be seen that now is withdrawn from the earth. And whoever is delivered from the foresaid evil shall see my wonders. For my son Jesus shall be revealed with those that be with him. And they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. After these years shall my son Christ die and all men that have life. And the world shall be turned into the old silence seven days, like as the former judgment, so that no man shall remain. And after seven days the world that yet awaketh not, awakeneth not shall be raised up, and, sh and that shall die that is corrupt. And the earth shall restore those that are asleep in her. I'm not saying I understand any of these. And so shall the dust, those that dwell in silence, and the secret places shall deliver these souls that were committed to them. The graves, I guess. And the Most High shall appear upon the seat of judgment, and misery shall pass away, and the long suffering shall have an end. But judgment only shall remain, truth shall stand, and faith shall wax strong. And the work shall follow, and the reward shall be shown, and the good deeds shall be a force, and the wicked deeds shall bear no rule. Amen. The kingdom of God. Amen. And that's it. So the nature of the battle is such as it is. And when you know what to avoid and where to go, you know the difference between the garbage and the flowers, you know, then you'll be walking on the right path which is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. It's him himself. Amen. Thank you for your time to listen. God, I pray that you would bless every single person who listens and that we would prepare for the marriage supper of the Lamb has come and that your bride, God, has made herself ready. We thank you for the, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. And we give thanks for him himself. In Jesus' name we pray. And thank you for watching. I know he will bless you. Amen.